game doesn't change. Okay, we have to win the turnover battle. Offensively, we got to protect it. We got to take care of it like it's everything. Defensively, we got to get after it. We got to take it away. We have to win special teams game changer. We got to make plays on special teams. We've got to be smart on special teams. We've got to be penalty free on special teams. We've got to win situational football. Offensively, we got to convert third downs. We've got to score touchdowns in the red zone. Defensively, we got to stop them on third downs. And we've got to stop them and you know, hold them to field goals in the red zone. And when it's time for the fourth quarter, we got to find a new level and we've got to win the fourth quarter. Man, this one is really simple. In this game, you only get what you earn. You don't get what your logo says you deserve. You don't get what your star rating says you deserve. You get what you are willing to put into this game. Your best game is all it takes. You're where you need to be. Go out there tonight, you bring fire, you bring passion, you bring energy, you bring physicality. summer evening here in Durham, North Carolina. And for Mike Elko, it's time to get started. In year number two, what a banner season it was to start. Nine wins, five of them in the ACC. And everyone is wondering, what do you have in store for an encore? What's going to start against the defending ACC champions in the Clemson Tigers? I, I think this game was very important to us because we didn't play too many you know, top of the country teams last year. So we didn't really know where we were, you know, compared to them. But when we got out on that field, we, we quickly, quickly realized that we can hang with these guys. You know, obviously you see the stars and everything like that, and so you're not sure, hey man, are they going to be way faster, way bigger, way stronger than us? You get out there, you start to compete. You're like, oh, we, we, we really can do this. Leonard from the shotgun takes the snap. Quick look to the left, talks to Ron straight ahead, trying to break a tackle. He does! He's got a first down and more! 30, 20, Leonard! Touchdown! My goodness! And the Blue Devils have the lead! First and goal, Klubnik from the shotgun takes the snap. Maffa again, lost it again! And it's scooped up by the Blue Devils! Headed the other way, 20, 40, across midfield! And finally brought down as he got to the 30-yard line! It's Jalen Stinson who came out of there with it! But he might be the hardest hitter on the field. He's one of the hardest workers on the team. He's one of the strongest, one of the fastest, and he knows how to play the game of football, right? And he cares. That's a kid who cares more about this game, about his team, and a lot of guys on his team, right? And he puts his all into everything, and he's always around the ball. That's why he shows up. That's why he can return kicks. That's why he can do everything he can do, because he truly cares for his team, and he's a good fit. It's like kind of, I guess we say, he's one of the definitions of our program. Here's the snap. The give to Moore running right. Chase into the edge, inside the five, and he's in! the snap with two they will keep it on the ground running left and a huge hole Jordan Waters cuts right 15 10 5 good night Jordan Waters turns the lights out on the Tigers that'll do it that'll do it Leonard takes a knee it's over both arms in the air for the head coach and why not a statement for Mike Elko as the students pour onto the field. 28 to seven, the final score. Duke thumps the Tigers. And they start the season with a resounding win over the number nine team in the country. Like we certainly didn't come into this game talking about an upset. We didn't come into this game talking about we had to do this and that to pull this amazing thing off. We just talked about playing Duke football. And I think people have a really hard time understanding that a group of kids can really come together and work extremely hard and change who they are and change what they're all about. 
and that's what these kids have done and, and that doesn't show up in stats or, or whatever causes us to be a major under, underdog or whatever else this was about a major upset. Um, and so we believe that we do the things we need to do to give ourselves a chance to win every game we play. And, and that's now, what, 15 games or 14 games that that's been the case. We've had an opportunity in every game this team has gone out there to win the football game. And we certainly didn't anticipate tonight would be any different. Duke All Access is brought to you by Gatorade. Greatness isn't about what you've done, it's about what you do next. By Continental Tire, the smart choice in tires. And by Coke Zero Sugar. They say Coke Zero is irresistibly tasty. Does that make it the best Coke ever? Find out for yourself. I need to try it first. Yeah. You can feel confident Continental is the smart choice in tires. Can they handle extremes? Yep. Tested from the Texas desert to near the Arctic Circle. Really? Really. Anything for the guy who finds that one pothole? Yeah. Road hazard coverage has your back. For real? Absolutely. Were they made by, like, a bajillion engineers? Well, closer to 100. Continental. Welcome to the smart choice in tires. Every year, thousands of athletes disappear in clutch moments due to falling hydration levels. I used to go missing all the time. I let everyone down. I even let Shannon Sharp down. Um, yeah, you let me down. They've been told how you feel yourself doesn't matter. That electrolytes are all the same. And just like that, they're gone. Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Could be the difference between dominating and disappearing. Gatorade. Rehydrate, replenish, refuel. Statistically, the world is losing color. But who wants a gray world when we could have this? Honey yellow, peri pinkle, indigo. Things stay the same when the same is where you stay. But in hundreds of Delta destinations, simply opening your eyes can open your world. Try it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the things with captains at Duke that we try to do is, is we let the players truly select it. And, and there's a lot of places where they, they say it's a player vote uh, and maybe the coaches get in there and kind of finagle things a little bit. Um, we don't. Uh, we truly let the players select the captains. And so, you know, the players always know the pulse. They know who the guys are that they want to follow. They know who the guys are that represent this program and everything that we stand for. And, and as a coaching staff, we're certainly excited with the group that we have. Uh, we think they represent everything that we want to be about. Being a captain my third year in a row, um, it actually means a lot, especially knowing everything we've gone through over the last couple of years, and specifically last year being Coach Uggles' first year. I'm transitioning now to his second year, and just knowing the guys still believe me, still have my back, and believe me in the direction that I will lead them, no matter where it may be, and they trust what I say, they trust what I do, and they actually believe in who I try to be as a person, which is a person who shows up every day, um, values their work, uh, respects the team, and actually cares about their team. So it just, it honestly means a lot to know that they continue to vote me his captain, and it's really a blessing. Dwayne Carter is such a unique player, and, and we try to appreciate him all the time. I think to be a three-year captain, um, to be involved in the Duke community as much as he has been, to be a spokesman for different things, for student athlete experience uh, all over the country. I, I think he just represents everything that you would think Duke football would stand for. And then obviously he's a tremendous player on the field. And so, uh, you know, we try very hard to, to enjoy the days that we have with him because we know he won't come around a lot. Play fake, wants to throw, hit from behind and fumbled it. It's scooped up, headed the other way. It's Dwayne Carter for the touchdown. A scoop and score. And it's 20 to nothing.
he's got a personality, right? And, and so some kids, when you say vocal leaders, I just think Dwayne's got a great personality. And so talking for him is really easy. And so he does a good job getting up in front of the team. He does a getting good job of getting his message across. And so I think people just yield to him because he's so comfortable in those settings. I've definitely grown so much as a leader since I first started in uh, 2021. 2021, my first year as a captain, yeah. So I've grown tremendously, um, whether it's knowing different situations, um, actually really understanding and knowing your teammates. Like I took pride in knowing the team as a young guy, but I really didn't get to know the team until the last couple of years. And on a personal level, seeing like what their family's like, what they like, what they value, what their interests are outside of football, right? And actually getting to know a person for who they are. And then that only in turn just helps me lead better. So knowing in situations when somebody may mess up or somebody needs to be corrected, somebody needs to be you know, encouraged, just different things and see how different people respond and react to. And I feel like I was able to do that best by getting to actually really know my teammates. Here's the snap to Armstrong. Duke rushes four. He's got some time. Now it's winding down. And Franklin's got him. Sack back at the 18-yard line. Have a night, Jamie Young. But Jamie on Franklin has single-handedly taken over this game. I always felt like that I was a supporting leader for, uh, for the team last year, so. Um, you know, with Wayne and Graham, those guys having surgery after the season and being out for spring, I uh, just made it my mission to be more involved and be more of a leader uh, to lead the guys. And, you know, it led me to being um, nominated as a captain. And uh, it's great. You know, I'm honored to, to lead this new team and this, uh, this great opportunity we have this season. So I'm looking forward to, to help and contribute and uh, leave my legacy on this team. When I got to give him his jersey as, as being named the captain, I felt like, you know, his life and our relationship kind of came full circle at that moment. And you know, obviously, I remember Jamie on from high school and, and worked really hard to get him to go to Notre Dame. And then, you know, both of our lives took, took some detours and, and wound up back here together. And so uh, it's been really cool to see him change the way he approaches his day to day life. I, I think. Uh, maybe his career went a little bit sideways for, for the middle part of it, but to watch him get it all back here these last two years since, since I got here and then to see that be you know, acknowledged by his peers and get voted captain, I thought was something that was really special. Our mindset and our culture has been established. We're going to get out there, we're going to fly around, and we're going to attack the ball. And uh, just because we had one good year at it doesn't mean anything's going to change. Uh, every practice we, we do a turnover circuit and you know we're getting after the ball, we're training, and we're really overemphasizing the ways that we get after the ball. I mean, we're, we're punching at it, we're clawing at it. There's been times where we've been told to, you know, tone it down at practice to stop beating up on our backs and our receivers. But um, I think that in year two, you're going to see a, another big step in the, the aggressiveness of our defense, the way that we prioritize getting the ball, and uh, just our level of, you know, swarm, just flying around, attacking the ball, attacking guys, and getting them on the ground. Um, I think that there's only room for improvement. I know that we got to communicate and take that to another level. But um, you know, I'm, I'm really, I'm really happy with where we're at now. Again, we have a lot of old guys, a lot of veteran presence, and uh, the young guys are following suit. You know, they see the role models, and you know, I, I, I make it a priority to talk to the young guys and let them know like this is the standard, and it's not going to change with Duke Devil defense. He's certainly a very mature kid, you know, and he has he has had the experience and, and learned how to compartmentalize a lot of things in his life and still continue to be dedicated to his craft and to this program. And so I think people respect that. I think they respect his journey and everything that he's been through. But, um, you know, obviously when he's here with us, you know, he just kind of gives us everything he's got. Every year, thousands of athletes disappear in clutch moments due to falling hydration levels. I used to go missing all the time. I let everyone down. I even let Shannon Sharp down. Um, yeah, you let me down. They've been told how you feel yourself doesn't matter. That electrolytes are all the same. And just like that, they're gone. Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Could be the difference between dominating and disappearing. Gatorade, rehydrate, replenish, refuel. People have trusted Reed's Jewelers with their life's moments since 1946. That's because we're family owned. We treat everyone who walks through our doors or visits our website as a part of our family. We have a beautiful selection of jewelry and watches for any occasion. We offer free shipping and returns, as well as multiple payment options to make sure you find the perfect gift. See why people have trusted Reed's Jewelers to celebrate their life's moments for over 75 years. It's bow time. It's not just football season. It's tailgate season. And this season includes every kind of football. Crispy. Will you accept this leg? 
and everything that's not. Because it doesn't matter where you tailgate with crispy hand-breaded chicken and scratch-made biscuits. It's her! <gasps> you're not just tailgating. You're tailgating like a legend. It's bow time. <laughs> Head to Bojangles and grab your tailgate box today. Duke's New Century cries out for a university where the drive to discover is not hemmed by disciplinary logics. Where philosophers work side by side with physicians and physicists. Where nurses find inspiration in narrative theory. Where mechanical engineers team up with marine biologists or musicians. I believe Duke will continue to be that university together. Jacob's a little bit different. Jacob's a little bit more lead by example. I think he's he's a little bit more fiery, a little bit more emotional. I think when he has his conversations, they probably happen a little bit more outside of the scope of what I would see. Um, but another kid who, who works extremely hard, his work ethic drives him to be a leader on this team. I think everybody in this program respects who he is, how he plays the game, and kind of what he stands for. You know, growing up being the biggest Duke football fan from the time I was five years old, I remember coming to all the games and then uh, just having the support of my peers two years in a row to name me captain. Jacob is the ideal son. Jacob is the ideal player. I am so proud that he's a great citizen. He is a great person. Anyone you talk with, any coach, any teacher, that's the first thing they'll say is what a great person he is. Um, and, and that's what I like the most. Football will come and go, but how you treat people in the end, your name carries a lot of weight. My parents always told me that. One thing that Coach Feely has taught us is that there's really no such thing as a leader that leads by example. You have to do both. Um, because in moments that, you know, maybe the team doesn't have energy today, you're the, you're the one that's gonna be called on to bring that energy. Um, you're the focus point of the team, you're the focal point of the team. I'm just looking to grow each and every day. Um, I feel like another point that uh, has helped me a lot is um, talking to Riley, Dwayne, Graham, Jamie Allen on just things that I can do better. And not only them, but uh, just other guys as well. And yeah, They've really helped me throughout camp and throughout the workouts, uh, just guide the team for sure. You know, we all feed off one another every, every day that we step out onto the field. Um, we've all been in the situations that we prepare for. Um, there are so many different guys I can lean on now and, and that know what to do. And that's really what gives me the most confidence when, when we're in a two-minute situation and Jalen Calhoun knows, you know, catch the ball and get immediately outside uh, and get out of bounds. Those type things are, are the things that really, you know, you see out there at practice and you see, you know, the strides that we're making. Second and 24 off the 26. Leonard from the shotgun, looks to the right, has some time, now tucks to run across the 25 to 30, angles left, 35, back to the right. Leonard's loose across midfield. Riley Leonard pulling away. He'll go all the way for the touchdown. 74 yards, and the Blue Devils have the lead. Riley Leonard, that's what dreams are made of. Maybe just rip it down the field. Riley becomes unique because he's got this competitive edge about him that people follow. And I think one of the things that really jumped off watching him play last year was how he could galvanize a group to get behind him. And so um, I think that maybe even surprised some people last year what he could do and how competitive he really was. And I think that's the trait that makes him the best leader. The second I was voted, that was, you know, immediately the greatest accomplishment of my life. And, uh, you know, I'm not taking it for granted by any means. I think that was just the start to my kind of leadership journey. Obviously, you know, rising junior, I was a little bit younger, um, and, and I am the youngest captain. So I take a lot of, you know, responsibility in that. You know, I know my role, and I know that my role needs to step up as a leader every time I, you know, step out onto the game field. You know, every time I step into the locker room, wherever I am, I kind of have to carry that on my chest. I think anytime you're the established quarterback in a program, you're viewed as a guy that people have to respect and listen to. And, you know, certainly his character and his makeup uh, allow that to continue to go. And so you know, I think the whole team kind of looks at him to be a guy to lead us. You know, I think servant leadership is kind of my leadership style. You know, I don't put myself above anybody. Uh, you know, I, you look at who my best friends are, you know, they're, they range from, 
you know, the best players to the worst players on the team. I think that just, you know, is something that's very important for a leader, I think. It shows on the field whenever guys have your back. I think the more you do stuff for other, others, the, the more they're going to want to do things for you. So it definitely pays off on the football field whenever I got, you know, great defense alignment trying to, you know, hit me every single play and great offense alignment that'll be there to protect me. These mascots represent some of the most heated rivalries in college sports. What could possibly bring them all together? Everyone agrees on the best team in smart home security. CPI. It's bow time. It's not just football season. It's tailgate season. And this season includes every kind of football. Crispy. Will you accept this leg? And everything that's not. Because it doesn't matter where you tailgate with crispy hand-breaded chicken and scratch-made biscuits. It's her! <gasps> you're not just tailgating. You're tailgating like a legend. It's bow time. <laughs> Head to Bojangles and grab your tailgate box today. You can feel confident Continental is the smart choice in tires. And the handle extremes? Yep. Tested from the Texas desert to near the Arctic Circle. Really? Really. Anything for the guy who finds that one pothole? Yeah. Road hazard coverage has your back. For real? Absolutely. Were they made by, like, a bajillion engineers? Well, closer to 100. Continental. Welcome to the smart choice in tires. Duke Football 360 with Dave Harding, presented by Continental Tire, the smart choice in tires. Duke Football's Labor Day victory against number nine Clemson was the first time they beat a top 10 team since the 1989 season. It's actually Duke Football's first win over a ranked opponent since 2016. How do you make history? Well, a lot of things have to come together. But after watching the tape, one thing kind of stuck out to me, and that would be the relentless effort that the Blue Devils played with, especially in the second half, down the stretch. When things start to get tough, they never look back. This is the opening offensive series of the second half. Blue Devils find themselves down one point, seven to six, a few miscues in the first half, unable to necessarily capitalize on some of the opportunities that they have. How are they going to respond? Riley Leonard takes a snap and initially, Things don't look good on this play. There's a lot of penetration along the line of scrimmage. Leonard looks like he's going to get tackled for a loss. Instead, he finds his way through, gets down the field, tightrope the sideline, and into the end zone for the Blue Devils' first touchdown of the afternoon, pulling ahead of Clemson. Look at some of the blocks that took place down the field to allow this to happen. You've got Hornybrook, the right tackle, locked up with a safety. Here is Dal Mullen, the tight end, also on a safety. Jordan Moore, you'll see him popping in the screen with some contact down the field to help Leonard, an athletic dual threat quarterback, make a big play. Nice work collectively, not giving up on the play, even though things initially don't look great and finding a way into the end zone. Look here, another angle kind of slowed down at the foot churning for Riley Leonard, willing his way down the field and getting a touchdown. This is a little bit later in the game, the end of an 11-play drive for Clemson. Blue Devils find themselves backed up. It's first and goal on the one. A really tough place to be for a defense, and a lot of defenses would probably give up saying, look, they're knocking on our door. Might as well let them in. Let's go get a quick breather. But I want you to watch the effort along the defensive line. These three positions right in here. Number 93 time captain Dwayne Carter eating up a double team, occupying two blockers. Jamie on Franklin defensive tackle blowing up the right guard into the backfield. And then the left tackle gets demolished by Anthony Nelson, 93. Look at him get pushed into the backfield 
And despite a lot of contact and being dragged to the ground, Nelson shows extra effort to push through. And it's that effort, that relentless pursuit, embracing the grind when it's tough, that gets the ball popped up into the air. Stinson scoops it up 55 yards later. He's rumbling down the field, injecting all sorts of energy into the team. The fan base getting behind it. Look at the student section going absolutely wild. And here you are, a couple plays later, Riley Leonard and company knocking on the door, hand the ball off to Jacquez Moore. And look at the speed there, outrunning a top 10 defense to the sideline, getting up the field, well blocked, well executed, and a touchdown capitalizing on what the defense had just given them and pulling away late in the game from Clemson. A lot of things came together on Monday night for Duke. One thing that never wavered was the willingness to go to work and knowing that they were going to give their maximum effort despite what was going on. Relentless pursuit, embracing the grind. That was Duke football's winning edge. Right, and we said this at the end of last year, and I'm going to say it again. Right, I didn't come here for one good year. I didn't come here this year for one good game. You guys didn't come back for one good game. This is the start of a season. That's what this is. And it's a statement for who you are and what you're all about, and that's it. Right, and that's it. And we wake up tomorrow, and we go to work to go become 2-0. and And that's where we're at in the season. So congratulations to you guys. You laid it all on the line. You believed in each other. You believed in yourself. You did everything that we asked you to do to get yourselves ready for this game. This is the result, man. Uh, it's a testimony to what you can accomplish if you put yourselves together and you're willing to give a lot to an organization. These kids work so hard. Um, they put so much into this thing. Uh, and they just continue to fight and come together to be successful. And so uh, really, really happy for those guys, really happy for what they accomplished, uh, really happy for this night. And, and, you know, I'll finish like you guys will expect to, that, you know, that's, that's one win, and we still got a lot more to play. What we've been saying internally is, is this is what Duke football is capable of. We've never, ever wavered, wavered from that at all. Um, I think what it says now to people on the outside is they get a little validation that it's possible, right? And in this day and age, we gotta find ways to validate what we say, and, and that's what it is. And um, yeah, I promise you internally, um, we're one to know, and that's honestly where we're at as a football program.